Welcome to La Taverna Friuli Wines, the definitive podcast on wines from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I'm your host, Wayne Young. Hey, Friuli Wine friends, it's your pal Wayne Young, La Taverna. How's everybody doing? You doing okay? I hope so. Got a best of for you today from about a year ago, last March, 2022, with Diletta Rubini and Dimitri Pintar from the Villa Rubini Winery. Interesting folks, very, very funny, very obvious here, um, the, the warmth and the, the amicability that we feel there. And one of the things that I really do miss about uh, recording La Taverna inside the taverna of uh, Roberto Milani, who was our sound guy and a dear friend, was the, uh, the pre-show meeting at uh, the wine bar around the corner. This is where we would always meet our guests and there would always be at least one glass of wine before recording the podcast. And of course, during the, uh, the podcast session, we would, we would sit with, uh, at least one bottle open. And I think in this, uh, in this episode, you can hear, um, the fact that maybe we had a glass or two beforehand, not that we were drunk, but we were certainly happy and giggly and just, it was a really nice time. And I actually say that I do miss that aspect of recording La Taverna in Robbie's actual taverna. If you look back on the, the website or on social media, you will see some uh, pictures of where we used to record it. Unfortunately, Robbie's busy schedule just did not gel. He was only available one evening per week, and uh, I was lucky enough to score a little corner in the Tasting Academy and also begin working closely with the Consortio, especially for the production of Dalla Vigna al Vino which is the Italian language podcast, which is running weekly now on Tuesdays. Every week, a new grape variety. There are 12 episodes, four of which have already come out. So check that out if you speak Italian. Hopefully, there will be an English language version in the future, but uh, this we shall see. But for now, uh, let's get going here with this episode from March 17th of last year with Diletta and Dimitri from Villa Rubini. I want to welcome, first of all, my lovely co-host, Natalie Benlolo. Welcome back to the Studio Taverna. Natalie, I've missed you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here with two lovely bubbly people. Not, of course, not just talking about yourself and Robbie. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, yep, happy to be here. And nobody's ever called me bubbly before. <laughs> First time so I didn't everything. think it was me. <laughs> yep. Good energy in here tonight. A lot of good energy in yep. here tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, I think we need to sort of keep the, uh, the pre-show drinks going. It kind of loosens <laughs> things up. Oh. <laughs> We are here with Diletta and Dimitri. Diletta, what is your last name? Uh, Rubini. Oh, Rubini. Yes, yes, oh, that, that makes it easy, doesn't yes. it? So, Because I didn't want to just assume that your last name was Rubini. Yeah. So, and Dimitri Pintar. Exactly. Yes, from the Villa Rubini Winery in, mm-hmm. uh, in Spesa. No, in Spesa, Spesa di Cividale. Spesa di Cividale. Okay. So Dimitri is the winemaker and Diletta, obviously yes. with this obvious yes. last name yes is part of the family yes yeah. so i am gonna start with you oh thank you Diletta. So, thank you Wayne. And thank you for coming yes, tonight. thank you and for... tell us a little bit about the history of villa rubini villa rubini yeah it's it's a long history and uh, it's from my family till uh, 1814 so 
1814. Yeah, 1814. So almost 200, 200 years, years that it's from my wow. family. And okay. now it's uh, me and my husband that are working in the, in the winery. So still continue to produce wine. And uh, we have this very old villa that has got about uh, 300 years, so, like we see, like is now, like we see in the way it is now. And, but the, the, the history is, uh, is longer because the, the place stays close to a Roman street, ah. a Roman way that, that uh, from Cividale goes to, went to Aquileia. So oh, okay. it was a quite uh, famous Roman uh, Roman street, Roman road. So was there like a sort of like a, a, a roadhouse there along yeah, the way? Yeah, and it or? was a, so about, about uh, two thousand years ago, or was also was also a, a like a, a farm, like a, ah, okay. a, vine, a vineyard, and really? a winery. Yeah. So this, and uh, it's so something. These, there's two thousand two thousand years, years of history. history yes, and of making wine. Yeah, and my mother found uh, found this, and uh, she she did so. Wow. Uh, she did some research and uh, she found this way and uh, it's, it's, it's really, the, the atmosphere, it's, it's great because uh, you can imagine how it was 2,000 years ago and the, the, they were doing the same work that we are doing now and so it's great. And then uh, we have found some written uh, from the families that on the properties in, before us. So there were two families from Cividale and now yeah, it's all. About 200 years that it's from my family. So how, how did your family come into possession? Did they buy the property or was yeah, it they, they inherited? Bought, they, they bought the property because they, they produce silk. So the, the area was very famous for silk production. And so they bought the estate. Yeah, for sure it was for the vineyards and for the wine production because it was, it was still there. But a lot of uh, a lot, a big part of the of the state was for uh, for the silk. So with these trees, the jealousy trees, and uh, and the houses around the the villa were always used for for the silk production. Yeah. Okay. And it was also um, famous for um, yeah, the silk and the tobacco. A lot of tobacco in Friuli. Too. Really. Yeah. Okay. And of course, wine and uh, olive oil, and we we are continuing olive to, oil too. to do this. Yeah. So not just olive oil from the south, but from no, up here too. Also from here, yes. Now, do you you it, know what jealousy are? In, I do. In English, what are, what's the English word for jealousy? I don't. Now I'm going to have to check it, but jealousy. They're the little stumpy trees you yeah, see is on the side of the here. road. Yeah. That. And those the reason why they use them often to. Line separate, the yeah, was because they actually use the leaves for, for silk production. For the silkworms. Yeah, the silkworms yeah. eat the leaves. They're mulberries. Mulberry mm -hmm. tree, well done. Yeah. That's right. Just popped into my head. That's right. Yes. Do you still Mulber produce olive oil? A uh, very small quantity. Spots. We use, uh, still have olive yeah, trees. We continue to have some uh, olive trees. It's just for family use, so not a big production. And now the villa, it's in one part. Uh, we, we try to do a, a museum. Because it's inside, it's uh, it's interesting for, for to visit, and it's uh, my mother. She was very good to preserve the villa and didn't do a lot of change in the last years, and so now it's it's possible to see like a, a typical nice country house. So it's a villa veneta, and um, yeah, you you had told me the other day on the phone that you worked really hard to sort yeah, of preserve to preserve the, the villa, villa, and uh, now yeah uh, we. We don't have any more my parents uh, since a uh, couple of years. So it's uh, me and my sister that try to continue to keep the villa like, uh, like a museum. And when we were a child, we live in that part of the villa. So with my parents and, uh, and now we don't use anymore this very old uh, part with um, all the paintings in the walls. So it's, it's, it's interesting to, to see and to visit. Can, and so we decide to make a museum. If you, if you, yes. if you want, yeah. So we decided to make like a Casa Museo, yeah, from the, from, because it's, it's, um, it's full of things. Uh, all the people that live there maybe leave something. And so it's full of books and pictures and uh, old written and old, uh, old newspaper, for example. No and, no. uh, and many things uh, during also the First and the Second World War. Uh, so it's. It's quite quite interesting for me to for the people that come maybe to to taste the wine and uh, to see the state to visit uh, also inside this place and so me and my sister we try to to continue to do this mm, yeah great. she lives in Rome so she's not always here with us to work but uh, it's a big help 
Okay. For sure. Yes. So it's interesting because 1814, you said, so your family sort of lived through that very tumultuous, tumultuous period during the two world wars. Mm -hmm. So how did that affect the house and, and the, and the property and things like that? Because from what I've learned during the wars, like basically, you know, wine production was just stopped because everything was just trampled and destroyed. Were you guys spared in some of that conflict or what was the effect of that horrible period? On- yeah, the, the, in the villa, the, the, the soldier and the army, they, they stayed during the, the, the tears. So it's, uh, that's why we have many, many written in the walls and many signatures from the guy that uh, lived there. Oh, really? So from, they literally uh, signed yeah. the walls? Exactly. Cool. And so this happened in the first and also in the second world war. And it's also something that it's, uh, yeah, quite sad if you think, because mm. they live there and yeah, stayed the Italians, uh, the British, the, um, the Americans for two years after the second world war. Wow. We Hopefully there. we took good care of it. <laughs> <laughs> so in Spice now we have a lot of caps and books from the U.S. Army and it's written oh, U.S. Army properties. That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Apo- apologies on the part of all Americans <laughs> if they did horrible things there. Just want to make a blanket the, apology. We have the uh, many diaries that my grandmother uh, wrote in that time. And so I can I can read uh, what happened and what the Americans do. Uh, so wow. what they did, what they did in Milan. Almost was, maybe, was, maybe a good, uh, was a good was a good was a good time with the Americans. Time. Yeah, for sure. A lot, parties, a lot of parties, of course. A lot of parties. The a lot of parties, of course. <laughs> parties, of course. Yeah, a lot of parties. <laughs> I love so, that. Was it was a good time, uh, even if the history was 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 kind of hard. Was kind of hard. Uh, yeah, at the end of the Second World War, that, that two that two couple of years was uh, was a good part of the history. And uh, yeah, it's all written because my my grandmother was so good to keep a diary. Keep diary. Yeah. So now we, it's written many many things that if no you couldn't know, mm. it was impossible to Very know. Very interesting. So were you, was the, was the, the, the villa producing wine throughout mm-hmm. its history? Yes. Always so wine. So even continue. when you were growing up mm-hmm. there before you met Dimitri? Yes, for sure. Oh, okay. Always wine since when uh, my grand, grand, grandfather bought the, the estate was, was always wine production. Okay. The, um, the oldest label that we have, uh, it's from 1909. 1909. 1909. Wow. 1909. Yes. And it's uh, Merlot. Yeah, we have Merlot. You still have a bottle or yeah. you just, is it an empty bottle? No, no, it's full bottle. It's a full bottle. It's a full bottle. Oh it's a full bottle of 1909. 1909. 1909. When are we yes. opening that? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not. I'm when kidding, I win kidding. the lottery. <laughs> when you have, <laughs> not if I win it first. Yes. Anyway. And uh, <laughs> now we have also many, many bottles from uh, between the two worlds war, world war, no? Yeah, from, from the 19... 20s, the 30s. Yeah. A lot of bottles. That's incredible. Merlot, That's Cabernet, incredible. Wow. Verduzzo. Yeah, and then in the label it's written the quality of the wine and then Cantina Rubini, Spessa di Cividale, and it's, yeah, we have, we have many That's bottles. Amazing. So they survive, if you can, if you think they survive also, yeah, to the Second World War. Yeah. Nobody drinks. <laughs> so. Well. Also the Germans. Was like a, also the Germans, yeah. Because they, they, they were robbing the farms. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Germans, especially at the end of the war. So mm. they were just taking, taking everything. everything because yeah. they need supplies also to escape. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess. So I'm going to guess that Dimitri came to sort of help you out with the wine production. And then you guys laid eyes on each other and it was like love at first sight. Right or wrong? <laughs> More or less. Uh, <laughs> for Dimitri, yes. Maybe for Diletta, no. <laughs> Actually, she asked me out. <laughs> yes. You know what? My wife, too. I, these Italian girls, they're very forwards. <laughs> so, that's, yeah, that's true. So, so how is, is, did, did I kind of get the story right? Kind that's of. More or less. Yeah, kind of right. So we met at the Enology School in Cividale. Ah, so did you go to Enology yeah, School too? Uh-huh. We did the same school. Oh, okay. So I was I was a little bit off. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we did the same school. 
So you went to Manali. So, are, so we're going to, uh, so Dimitri, are you from here originally as well? I'm from Gorizia. You're from Gorizia. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but we like you anyway. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you met it at Enology School where? Yeah, in Chividale. In Chividale. Mm -hmm. Okay. We both uh, went there mm -hmm. and uh, I just kept practicing then the Enology and she switched to more, how do you say, human things. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so more, more sort of. Communication. More, really? communi that's the word I was looking communication. for. Like communication. Communication. Relations, yeah. public relations. Exactly. 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 Public That's important, English. man. Yeah. We have also, a, um, how do you say in English, Fattoria Didattica. It's a learning farm. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's a learning farm, yeah. Tell us, tell us a kids. little bit about that before we get into the wine, because we're drinking the wine already, so we've already gotten into the wine here in the studio. But before we get into the wine and, and the, the philosophy behind the winery, yeah, th there's a couple of interesting things going on. And one of them is this, yeah. you know, um, like it's like a farming school or tell yeah, me a little bit really more about that. it's a interesting project. She started from zero. It's totally her idea. To this was your idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So tell us, who should tell us about that? Oh, Dimitri or best. Diletta, tell us about <laughs> this. Best. Don't worry. We'll let Dimitri speak eventually. Okay. So, but first of all, I love kids. <laughs> so, okay. So we have. You, uh, you have five. We have five children. Yeah. So you must and, love them. Yeah. <laughs> we must, yeah, really, we love children. So, so the, the learning farm starts from a project because I, I think it was very nice to the kids uh, to learn um, about the agriculture and the um, wine production or many things that, that are from the countryside. So okay. it starts uh, a long time ago, I think uh, 18 years ago. 18 years yeah, ago. 18 years ago. a long time. And usually we have uh, children uh, from the schools uh, around, uh, our, around Cividale, but um, they arrive also from uh, Trieste or, um, or from the um, mountain part of Friuli, like Tarvisio or mm -hmm. from the seaside. So it's, they are not only from around where we, where we live. And we try to do the, um, in uh, September, October, the, the harvest with the children. Okay. And then uh, the, the so, harvest Did I, did of I the, miss how old the kids were? I might have missed that. How old are the children um, who are coming in? They start from uh, three till uh, 11, usually. Three years old? Mm -hmm. Also very small, yeah. Wow. They come uh, usually with, with the teacher, and we do also sometimes in the weekend with the families. And it's, it's very nice because they, they can stay outside, they play outside, they learn something about uh, what, uh, what we are doing. And now from, uh, I think, five or six years, so we, we do also the um, a new um, percorso, a new... A new uh, path. Yeah, in the, in the, gar in the garden. In the okay. very, we have this very old uh, park. Oh, park. okay. A new <laughs> route. A new, a new route, route. Yes. yeah. Yeah, it's not a garden, approach, it's a park. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you, sorry to interrupt you. When you say... Percorso. Are you talking literally about the route that you take, or are you talking about no. a course, a new sort of course that you're yeah. doing? Yes, okay. it's, it's more that. Uh, it's percorso is a new um, learning. See, si, a new learning. It's okay. a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a sort learning. of a course of study. Yeah. So it's not like an actual place where you walk through no. the park. Okay. No. Uh, so um, how big is the park? Uh, it's two hectares. Wow. Yeah. And so we, with the, with the children, we do. Um, I have done in before some research about the old legend from our region, like um, uh, fate, streghe. Oh. Fairies and witches. Fairies, witches. Folklore. Uh, I think the word is folklore. Folklore, yes. Yeah. So I've done Spils. a lot of uh, research Spils. about this uh, and what that, what that, that are traditional from our region, from okay. the sea up to the mountain. And uh, we have now about uh, 30 legends. From many different places of Friuli, mm. and uh, we also translate in the in the different languages that we have in Friuli. So, like uh, Friulano or uh, Sloveno, or we have some part of Friuli that they speak German and uh, many dialects too. And so, we translate the original legend in the original language also, mm. and so the kids can learn about uh, our 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 like a mythology. Yeah. See, yeah. Like mythology, a mythology. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Do you and, teach about the? Well, yes. uh, 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 Excuse me, Dimitri would know more about this, but the crepapete? A crivapete. Yeah, the a ones crivapete. with the backwards yeah. feet, right? We have uh, also crivapete. In you ever hear this, that? No. My you... friend Paola did a whole 
story about this, about these witches who live in the forest who have their feet backwards, but they were like wood wizards and they knew all about nature and how to forage and medicine from the land and all that sort of stuff. And they tended to be like these hermit women. Mm -hmm. And so to make people afraid of them, they were like, be afraid because they're witches with backwards. Yeah, you know, be a thing, show a shh. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this but, is uh, yeah. something new. No, so does something. that, would that include the Krampus? Yeah, the Krampus, to intervisio. Because uh, I think it's important to tell people that the Krampus is a tradition connected to St. Nicholas, which is connected to Father Christmas, yes. right? Santa right. Claus. Mm -hmm. And they are monsters and they're quite monstrous people that dress up, right? So, yeah. As devils with horns and they're really scary and they chase you with, with chains. But there's something good in the story. Yeah, it's um, San Nicolò is the, is the good thing of oh, yeah. the story it's because the, Campus the, are, <laughs> are really, really horrible. And all the kids are very afraid about Krampus, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have also the Krampus in our park. Yeah. And so this is um, another thing that, that we do with the, with the, the, the schools that come, come to visit us. My friend Stacy had got, got hit on by a Krampus one time in Udine. Mm. I swear, that's a true story. I would never go and see the Krampus. I'm scared of them. It we didn't go also, to see them. He just happened, happened to walk uh, in. Yeah, but it happened also to and me. He was in love with Stacy and he just, yeah, he was completely crazy about her. But anyway. <laughs> it happened with the Krampus. So he, I think he was a little bit drunk. And so this is the, the part that we, that we have uh, yeah, for the kids. And, and then, yeah, we have also a, a house that we rent for the guests uh, close to the villa. Okay. And it's a very big house. It's got 14, it's for 14 uh, people. Okay. So usually groups or big families or maybe many couples rent the, the whole house. Perfect and for wine tourism. Yeah, yes. it's, it's good. And it's, so it's so big and uh, a lot of rooms and uh, the big garden. It's, it's a private garden in the house, close to the house. Uh, in, in the ground. In the ground, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in summer, yeah, there is also the pool. And uh, it's it's an outdoor pool. You have so, a pool. Important yeah, for the guests, for that, sure. Write that down. Important. Yeah. Have when a it pool. gets hot, we're going to Villa Rubini. <laughs> Guys. Very simple. We're Everything here. is very can, simple. Can we use the pool, please? <laughs> <laughs> when it's very hot. We have, we have wine. <laughs> so anyway. So this is, this is nice. So I like very much uh, to, to, um, to have, to have people that, uh, yeah, they stay with us in, uh, in the villa and, uh, and this house, it's I think it's a it's it's a, it's a nice location because it's it's close to to us to the villa, but it's an ind independent house, so the people can can have their own privacy, and usually they are very happy about this. So they rent the whole house, and uh, it's not usually also find the houses so big to rent. So many groups also every year then come back from. Um, um, usually, well, we have guests from Germany, Austria, England. North Europe, but sometimes yeah, happen that we have people from America and Canada. Right. Maybe they have Italian. Mm. They comes the, 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 the family. Yeah, the family comes from have a connection connection somehow. from Friuli or with place Italy. To come together, yeah. So they they come there, and so yeah, it's a it's a very nice work. I we like very much, and it's also a way to promote the wine. No, absolutely. At the end, so it's it's good. And maybe they have children, so they can also stay with us. You now to do something, make them pick grapes. Mm, yeah. So the parents are very happy. The children stay with us. So we show they have some holidays too. <laughs> so the parents. <laughs> Come on, Junior, go go work in the vineyard with Dimitri. <laughs> while we have while we have like, you know, morning drinks. <laughs> go, go do something. Put together the house. Anyway, that's, it sounds great. It's, it's so much going on there. And this yeah. is all this is all your yeah, this is my your idea? Yeah. This is my, my idea. Yes. It's my idea to so we have vacation homes, mm. we have children coming in and learning about agriculture, which mm. I think is really interesting and really important because I, you know, I grew up thinking that like steak came in a plastic box mm. at the supermarket. I didn't know it came from an animal. So, you know, I mean, I think it's really important to sort of bring people, bring especially children back to that. Well, they have city farms now in, yeah. in, yes. in New York and London and places like this. They have city farms where. See things grow. Create a farm or you know, within the city and, and they bring kids like what you're describing to come and visit and explain to them that steak does not come in, in a, plastic a plastic box. box. It comes from this sweet, sweet little cow right here. 
<laughs> so yeah. No, it, it's really important. Yeah, it's really I think important. it's important, it's and 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 then so the children are very happy. It's uh, they don't they don't have to go to school that day. They stay in the country and they can play outside. So it's great for children, really. And the you get is... you get free labor. Yeah. <laughs> You get free <laughs> vendemiatori. Go free pick mess. the grapes, kid. Yeah, free what? Free mess. Free, free mess. A free mess. They, free they mess. make a mess. They make a mess, of course. Yeah. <laughs> They're kids. Yeah, that's what they do. That's that's their job. Exactly. More or less. Yeah. Oh, yes. wow. Very, very interesting. So you're a busy person. Hmm. Yeah, you have a lot to do. I think that the, during the year, the, the house, the old villa is the, the most big work that we have because it's very old and we, we spend a lot of time to take care about this very okay. old house. This is the, and the villa and also the park. It's really a huge work hmm. and we don't have so much help, so we do by ourselves and... Uh, we spend many days just just to, to repair or to do something in the villa and uh, the same way in the garden when we have time we have to to look up, look at to, to, to cut something in the garden mm-hmm. and uh, to, to to check that everything is okay no, there is not nothing dangerous and uh, so it, the place is really beautiful uh, we love that place it's has got a magic atmosphere really mm. it's it's magic it's something uh, that we love so much. Uh, well, you, but, you two uh, are obviously very, very attached mm, to the place. Yes, so you're doing so many things, and the villa is so important to you and your family. Mm, yeah, and then we also have the wine business, which yeah. is what Dimitri takes care of. So did so you were at wine school, enology school, and you said we need an enologist. Dimitri, can you come? And make our one. No, so tell us how you guys started working together. Tell us a little bit about that, Dimitri. Maybe you could give us a little idea. Of yeah, I can't remember the, the beginning. No, at the beginning, it's been so long you don't remember. Yeah, no, at the beginning I was working freelance, and then my father-in-law asked me to help, also in Spessa, and then from them became a full-time job for me. So I dropped all the rest. Oh, so you were working around? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when you knew Diletta? Yeah, we were married and I was Ah, okay. Working and around. then eventually they said, eventually they come said, on okay, board full time. Okay. Yeah, well, have father. a look first. Oh, yeah, okay. have a... Actually, they never asked me to come on board full time. <laughs> no, you no, just, was just, have you a just look, went please. in and you have a look and you just jumped and I've right been in. been absorbed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You just got absorbed. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it starts from my father, no? Yeah, 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 exactly. And how long ago was that? What year was that? I think it was 20 years ago. It, actually, it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yeah, hey, we celebrate. Have Should, a toast. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Cheers <laughs> to 20, 20 years ago. 20 years in I'm, Villa I'm pouring some more. Because, because we toast lies here. 20 years, all right. 20 years. Wow. See, I just celebrated my 20-year anniversary with my wife, so Great. I understand that, that kind of joy after yeah. two decades. <laughs> Wow, that's so, ah, great stuff. <laughs> so we are drinking a Schiopettino now. Yeah. But this is obviously not the only wine you make. You also make a macerated Ribola Gialla, yeah. which you brought us to taste tonight. Wow. Oh, my um, God. Sorry. What? A macerated Ribola Gialla. Yeah. Have I had macerated Ribola Gialla before? Does that you make had, it orange? Yes. Exactly. That's exactly. It's I an orange wine. I have never tasted an orange wine Oh, see, now, if I'd known that, Shame. I would have opened that instead. Mm, we'll open that me. post show. Wow. Yeah. Just for you, Nat. Curious. So you can have your first taste of orange, taste of orange wine, wine, which I do. first came across at a festival in Slovenia, but never. Oh, that's beautiful. Huh? Never tasted it. We, we, mm. we moved around, mm. but we didn't. But go ahead. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm curious. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely taste it with you, Nat. Okay. Because I want to see your face when you try your first time. I'm curious. Voice. Yeah. So 20 years, obviously you've been changing and evolving yeah, since you've, of you've course. been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I first met you like, and we were talking before the show, it was like 16 years ago mm. or something like that. Maybe a little bit less, 14 years ago, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there, yeah. And I think the winery was quite different then. Oh yeah, it was totally different. Totally, totally different. different. So it, Walk me through a little bit sort of like where you started when you came aboard 20 years ago and where you've arrived now. Yeah, the beginning, of course, you know, you just continue with with the work that is on. So okay. we kept doing the same wines with, 
which was... Uh, when you first started. Yeah, when I first started. Then uh, we started to focus more on native gripe, native varieties. So were you doing a lot of like Merlot and Cabernet, yeah, Merlot, and Chardonnay? Cabernet, Chard. Sauvignon Blanc, the whole... Now I'm ABC. <laughs> anything but Chard. Exactly. Okay, or anything but Cabernet. Exactly. Okay, so you've been focusing more on more native on uh, native grapes and um, be, well, when it was two thousand eight, two thousand nine, started with the certification of organic farming, okay. which I see proudly yeah. displayed upon your bottles. Proudly Bravo. displayed now, and yeah, um, lately we started also with natural winemaking. Okay, with maceration and uh, spontaneous fermentation. As that's only a recent uh... less and less till no findings. These two wines, no we findings. Have yeah. Here is a great example of no findings, no yeah, just a filtration. Little, yeah, it's complete. No finding, no, no filtration. filtration. Wow. Fining. Fining. Yeah. Fining, as in refine. No. No. As in, remember we were talking about yes. clarifying the wine. So that's what fining means, more or less, right? Okay. Or am yeah, I? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, clarifying the wine. Yeah, so you you take out sort of the elements of the wine in one way or another that makes the wine clear, star bright, what cloudy. they would call star bright. Uh, they would take take out the, the cloudiness. cloudiness. Yeah, because wine isn't always perfectly clear. So this is interesting. So it's that means it's talking about filtration, obviously. Yeah, filtration and filtration and finding use are of different. Finding agents, no. Yeah. So, um, so finding agents, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dimitri, yeah. because you are a winemaker and I am not. You basically put a substance into the wine and it tends to sort of fall through the wine and carry with it these substances which make the wine cloudy. Yeah. More or less. Like a sediment, sort of sediments. Of... Yeah, it's not quite, not quite sediment, uh, but you're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, it's basically a way to make it. Uh, ready earlier. So uh -huh. if you don't use this finding agents, no. You need to wait a little longer. You need longer. to wait a little longer, no? Okay. So that's why we have here 2019, Ebola Jala 2018. So there are, there are wines that needs one year, over one year. Okay. To So this is, for example, ready. this is non-filtered, the Ebola Jala, the macerated Ebola Jala that I've got in my hand is non-filtered. But it has been fined. Fine, fining agents have been used, but it's non-filtered. Okay. Is, is that, that what right? it says on the no, label? No, 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 no. This is not. Okay. We put just on the label non-filtrato. Okay. But yeah. Unfiltered. I mean, it's also not unfined. It's also unfined. Yeah. yeah. You just don't write it on the label. Uh, on the new labels, actually, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, integralmente prodotto in bottigliato. Okay. That's okay. So. And uh, in case of Schiopettino, also, there's no addition of sulfur dioxide. So no SO2 yeah, at all. No SO2 Zero. At all. Zero, Zero added. And, and uh, it's unbelievably fresh and drinkable. It's just that, you know, during the fermentation, develop naturally 30 milligrams per liter of, of, of sulfur dioxide. Exactly. And this is what the yeast does. Right. And uh, this is the only... The only um, Sulfur. Sulfur that is in the wine. So that's, keep that in mind now when people talk to you about like sulfite free wine, like the natural byproduct of fermentation is sulfur dioxide. It sulfurs on it, it creates sulfites on its own. Oh, yeah. It does it naturally because people often talk about it's the sulfites in wine that give you a headache. No, it's because you drank too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear all sorts of things. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. but I don't think it's sulfate in wine. There are something else, or as you said, you drink too much. Drink too much. Also, because I drank three you... bottles of Chardonnay last night. Those sulfites <laughs> really got me. <laughs> you know, many people are concerned about the sulfites in uh, wine, but if you think shrimps has ten times the sulfate, yeah, that the most orange juice chemical wine made, yeah. So yeah, things so, like that. Yeah. I, yeah, that was the thing I used to, uh, people used to say, oh, I get sulfites. I get headaches from sulfites. I was like, do you drink orange juice? And they're like, yeah, all the time. I was like, you're drinking way more sulfites than orange juice. Really? That, oh, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. full of sulfites. Otherwise, it would Also, it would in your funky. very healthy muesli that you have for breakfast, it's average 10 times of the sulfite that you find in wine. That's it. I'm off wow. muesli. Wow. <laughs> I'm only going to eat Nutella for breakfast. 
I mean, I don't blame as evil the sulfite. I understand it's, it needs in the wine to preserve, especially for the wine that are produced in larger quantity. No? Okay. This is just my choice. I don't want to add any sulfite. I find it more original, more... Um, I love it. I think it's great. Uh, and I, I rarely I, say I that about natural wines. I hear the taste of the grape, of the right grape that I test when I walk in the vineyard. No? Mm -hmm. That's why it's just giving me more emotion, this wine. But it's my choice. In the white wines, well, we do a small addition of sulfites because it has less tannins, so it's more difficult to needs preserve more, from the oxidation. Or so, no defense, yeah, yeah, you need more. But again, it's just a choice. I don't blame sulfites. I, it's not, not the evil of the wine. Right. Also because there are other food now that has way higher sulfite level than wine. Okay, yeah. I, I know that I've spoken to Teresa Keber, and I've spoken to Tamara Podversic, and they've basically said it's impossible to make wine without sulfites, without adding sulfites. But you seem to be doing a pretty good job. No, it's not impossible. Yeah. I partially agree. It's difficult, but it's not difficult, impossible. But not impossible. Okay. And uh, it's not possible every year. This, okay, I, I give you okay. that. <laughs> okay. Not every year you can do without sulfite. Question for you, Dimitri. Yeah. What? Is what are the what are the factors that make it possible? <clears throat> excuse me, or not possible? Oh, good that's, question. That's a good. I was going to ask that question. When uh, when I find out, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm still I'm still working on that. So okay. it's not to it's understand not like what it is, what it is actually. Um, the difficult part of natural vinification is know it in advance. So we have to follow constantly the wine, how it's fermenting, how it's evolving and try to anticipate so it's almost that something wrong is going to happen. <clears throat> it's almost intuitive. Yes. As you move intuitive. along, you... Okay. And it's a, an experience. Yeah, obviously. because the difficult part is that we are not really sure of uh, what kind of microorganisms are on the grape. Okay. So when you work with natural fermentation, this is the, the biggest question mark. Okay. No, and uh, it's something you cannot know in advance. So when start to ferment, then you see how the fermentation is going, how it's evolving, and then you start having an idea of what's going to be in your wine and uh, which path to choose. If you go fully natural, no sulfite, or it's better, a little bit of human intervention in the vinification, the winemaking process. Okay, so why did you make this decision to go... First organic and now vegan, I think is the word. And vegan. Okay, organic, right? We got organic and then we got okay. natural wine, so no sulfites. And now we got vegan, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> so organic was uh, a choice uh, simply for the environment. Okay. So this is how it started. Yeah. And then. Uh, Less chemicals, I'm, less... I'm going more and more radical on this organic now. <laughs> so even what is allowed, I tr tend to scratch, no? To Try to eliminate. Even, yeah, to eliminate really? also some fertilization, some uh, spraying agents. No, Because you can still use copper sulfate. Copper sulfate, yeah, but Friuli... That's, that's really impossible doing without. Without it, yeah. yeah. Question. We had a question before, well, mm. just before the program, because Diletta said you've got the list, you know what you're doing. I'm probably jumping the gun. Excuse me, otherwise I'll forget the question. Can you use animal manure in this? Uh, so for organic, yes. Of course. For vegan, no. Ah. Wow. So you can't use animal manure for no, vegan? No, no, no. For vegan farming, no, I cannot even use the 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 my uh, the, the gloves if it's skin. If it's made out of leather, yeah, that I've <laughs> heard. Mm -hmm. That I've heard. Yeah, you can't use leather gloves. I can get that bit, but I'm I'm curious about not using manure because it's it comes it's naturally. Yeah, but it comes from uh, it's an animal product, an animal byproduct. Yeah, right? just like cheese, mm. it just comes out of a different hole. The point one, of, you, one you eat and one you probably should. Out of. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you I us. eliminate that before this happened that this suit with the vegan protocol, no? 
Okay. So, so you I decided, the yeah, I eliminated the manure, uh, the animal manure okay. before, and then I realized, okay, let's, oh, I'm vegan. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm vegan. <laughs> so you can certify vegan. Yeah, because um, the problem we have with animal manure is that brings a lot of seeds together. Okay. That the animal eats, no? And uh, this survive through the digestion seeds. channel and comes out in the manure. So uh -huh. if it's not perfectly ripe, then you spread the seeds around the vineyards and all Things. the wheat start to grow. That's so, interesting. I, and, yeah, uh, I never thought of that. I, I mean, this is my biggest enemy because we don't have any wheat killer, chemical wheat killer. So okay. we have to gra uh, cut and mulch. So it's about it's about thinking about things before they happen. It, yeah. it, so something like what you've just described, you know, you have to think, well, what happens if Jack, because of weeds, you can't use the manure, even if the manure is a positive thing and a exactly. natural thing. Right. Uh, this I found out this by using the manure of my horses. <laughs> okay. So I, I noticed that when I spreading that, that I have weeds that I don't have Group. any other parts. Blimey. So, <laughs> That's wow. I never, ever thought of that. And then I realized, okay, but it, it must makes be sense. that. Of course. Yeah. You don't digest seeds, do you? No, you don't. No. You don't. I just pass right through most of the time. Yeah, they are designed for that. Yeah. A lot of them are. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, Scupatino. We Scupatino. Scupatino. Ribola Gialla. Other wines? Other wines. Uh, we are very proud of our Pignolo. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're good friends with Ben Little? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Our buddy Ben, with the Pignolo Whisperer. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, Pinot Grigio. Okay. Which I consider a native wine in Friuli. Really? Oh, yeah. It has a long heritage. It's, if you think the, the, the tradition of Pinot Grigio making in Friuli is longer than Friulano. Really? Oh, yeah. Pinot Grigio is way before Tokai Friulano was no. in our region. Wow. I'm so learning a lot tonight. So man. why not? Well, why why not? can't be native to Friuli? You, you know, what's interesting is that the Pinot Grigio around the world, around the world, from what I'm learning, people talk about some of the best Pinot Grigio comes from this region. Of course it does. Oh, yeah. So as, as you quite rightly say, why can't it be? considered native if it's being produced for so many years mm. well, and it's that, such a level they drink pinot grigio everywhere everywhere yeah absolutely absolutely well you know that was one of the things i used to say about free Rulano, but i didn't i didn't realize i was contradicting myself when you part and when you talk about pinot grigio oh, i'm sorry no 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 it's not a problem I, i'm here to learn too you know um because i used to always say well how many centuries does a grape variety have to be in a place before it becomes native. And so how do you, what's the criteria for being, because nothing ever grew here spontaneously mm. apart maybe from, from Schiopettino um, yeah. <laughs> or maybe Ribola, Ribola and Pignolo. And Pignolo. Pignolo. Those are the, the really the ancient older, ones. The yeah. Ancient, yeah. yeah. Because we found a book in, from 1400 something yeah. that was already mentioned Pignolo in it. Well, I, I know, you know, working with the Rapuzzi's, Mm. That they've done like genetic studies on Schiopettino, and it's a completely different Cepo Genetico than the rest of the grape varieties here. Mm. And it's got like a possible 2,000 year, 3,000 yeah. year history in Friuli. You're making me think of the Paul Bulk book. There yeah. was a Dutchman, we, we did a, a show with Paul Bulk. He wrote a book on. You must know Paul Bulk, okay? The, he, he, his theory, I haven't read the book, his theory is that the Adriatic and certain areas of the Adri Adriatic, so Friuli going into Istria and some parts of Croatia. Yeah, he and considers Slovenia. To, and Slovenia, he considers to be one terroir. And it's all about the research that he's done into these native varieties and their ancestors. Yeah. Which is why these wines could be considered autochthonous, could be considered sure. native. Yeah, yeah. So Pinot Grigio, what else do you do? You do Friulano? I do Friulano, of okay. course. Do you do a natural style for Ulano or do you do sort uh, of no, a more conventional yet. style? What's that? It's more conventional. More conventional. Uh, Friulano. Other reds? So um, Pignolo, Scupatino. Those are those are good. You're hitting high points. Oh, Refosco? Yeah. Do you do any Refosco? No, Refosco, no. No. Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. That's adventurous. That's adventurous. And you do a natural style. Natural style. 
Oh, this is actually the first. Uh, I'm coming to your house to the taste first, that. The first vintage. First vintage. 2021. Okay. How long have you been making Scipitino? Oh, Scipitino since 20 mm -hmm. years. You've since always, I moved to Trinidad. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, also before. Also before uh, Dimitri. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, we have the um, old papers from 1814. Scipitino. Yeah, with all the maps of the vineyard. And they were Scipitino. Or Tokai. Okay. And it was... Uh, Ribona. Ribona Giallo. Oh, yeah. Wow. From way back then. For way back then, yeah. That's great. It's amazing. So it's interesting. I wonder, I get this impression from listening to all of you winemakers that Pinot Noir seems to be the sexiest of all the grapes. There's something very special about this variety. Why? Why is it so special? Dimitri? I don't know. It's like a beautiful woman. You wow. see her and you just fell in love. <laughs> the impression I get. Yeah. Is, is, no, I can't explain why. I just, I'm yeah. deeply in love with Pinot Noir. Really? Yeah. You're deeply in love with deeply Pinot Noir. Deeply in love with Pinot Noir, yeah. I think it's like. I had this old vineyard and then it was very small, so it was a small production. And from, I said, okay, let's replace and we planted. Can't remember even what. Probably Tokai or okay. another variety. So, and I was missing so much that Pinot Noir. So, in 2015, I did okay. this new vineyard, and I waited yet yeah, till this year that to find the, the the fruit was really because you know when the vines are too young, the fruit is not really interesting exactly. for the winemaking. Yeah. So, it doesn't has an aging potential. So. so, 2015, you normally the vineyard start producing in the third year. So, I waited. Another couple this of years. Year. <laughs> okay. Before making my first natural. Natural Pinot, Pinot Noir. Are you the only one in Friuli who's doing natural Pinot Noir? Because oh. there aren't a lot of people making Pinot Noir in Friuli. No, no. And I think you might be the only one doing Probably natural. Just the only natural. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll see. I mean, still in the barrels. Yeah. Just finish the fermentation. Okay. So maybe I have time to screw it <laughs> before. <laughs> Before yeah. comes time to vote. Pl so plenty of time. Don't, don't advertise too much. <laughs> don't fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's talk in a year. <laughs> don't, yeah. Hey, out there, everybody, don't get your hopes up on the Pinot Noir. <laughs> it, it may turn courageous. out to be, yeah. Courageous. It's extremely courageous. courageous. Yeah, that's a, it's a great way to be. I mean, it, that's what winemaking is all about. You got to have, you got to believe, you know. And, you know, if I can answer your question about Pinot Noir, I think Pinot Noir is, is kind of hypnotic. I think every wine, every winemaker I've ever spoken to has been in love with Pinot Noir, just like Dimitri. And there's something about it. It's, it's difficult and it's ethereal and it's delicate and it's complex. And it's, there's so much about it and you need so much time and experience and knowledge and faith to take that leap and try and make Pinot Noir. Am I, am I speaking out of my oh, ass? Yeah. No, no, no. Talk? It's exactly like that. And while you were speaking, I was thinking of the excitement just to decide the right moment to pick the grape. <laughs> yeah. To decide when harvest. It's, and yeah. it was like twice a day I was looking the grape. No, maybe, <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Little more. Just, just a little, little bit more. more. <laughs> There's that wonderful film, uh, Sideways, based in uh, California. Right. Mm -hmm. And... I watched the film many years ago before I lived in Italy and before I had this relationship with wine that I have now. And they just, they were just like Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir. It was all about, it was like, it was like the last reach. It was like, that was the ultimate goal or yeah. the ultimate, what, what, that was the ultimate, was the Pinot Noir. And I, so it's. Yeah. I forget who wrote the book. I think it was, it might've been Matt Kramer who wrote the book about Burgundy. And he basically starts off the book by saying like, everybody who loves wine, they have like that one Pinot Noir moment. And then they chase that moment for the rest of their <laughs> lives. And they spend ridiculous sums of money buying bottles and cellaring bottles and trying to get that moment. The word back. drug comes to mind. It's almost drug. like a drug. Like you're trying to get that same high that you got the mm -hmm. first time that you tried it. And Pinot Noir is kind of like that. So Kudos, Dimitri, for, for taking this leap of faith and jumping into Pinot Noir. 
So. Okay, we, sp- we spoke too much about Pinot Noir. <laughs> we did speak. We spoke a lot about <laughs> Pinot Noir. Let's speak a little. Now talk we a little. too much expectation. Exactly. Now everybody's going to be writing you emails. Yeah. When is the Pinot Noir? When is ready? Where's, where's the Pinot Noir? Do I need the Pinot Noir? <laughs> so, but yes. Yeah. So talk to me about this Cupertino. This is 2019? 2019. 2019. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's delicious, by the way. And and that's... That, is a lot for me because I'm normally not a big natural wine guy, but you've managed to keep the um, the levels of like acetico down, mm-hmm. so it's not too acidic. English. So it's it doesn't taste like vinegar. vinegar. Doesn't exactly. taste vinegar at, at all. At all. At all. Even if you, I mean, more deeply you go in the natural wines, you learn that certain level of volatile acidity are part of of what's the, going on there. What's going on yeah. there is a part of the tasting uh, profile yes. of the wine. Yeah, you know? exactly. And either uh, you somehow love that or you en- don't. enrich that. Okay. You know? oh, I said certain level. Right. Okay. So <laughs> let's not go. You don't have to go crazy on that. It's not that it has to taste the vinegar, but you'll find higher level than conventional wine, of course. Okay. Otherwise, there's no point to doing conventional wine if. We can do a natural wine with same volatile acidity level as, <laughs> as a say, all wine. the the chemical helps that gives no okay know, that you ha- get in the conventional wine. So, but yeah, if it's uh, in Italian, it's domato, uh, dominate, it's, uh, con- yeah, con- it's limited, limited. Right? Yeah, domato yeah. would be tamed. Yeah, tamed. Okay, so something wild or something exactly tamed. Yeah. It's when it gets okay. When it's tamed, it's uh, a pleasant component of aromatic profile. Abs- absolutely. I totally agree. And a little bit of volatile acidity is actually You're quite using, interesting. Uh, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt Dimitri, but you said it again, volatile acidity. Yeah, which is what it we can, perceive as It can vinegar. do something you don't expect it to do. You uh, laugh at me. I told you I'm learning. No, no, no. You're, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I want... I want uh, Dimitri to sort of explain like what volatile volatile acidity is like, because even people who are listening might not really understand that concept. Oh come on, it's what twenty more years that I'm out of the school. I can't, <laughs> I can't really remember. So it's basically it's mainly um, acetic acid. Yeah, which is which is vinegar. Which is vinegar. Yeah. Okay. Then there are also other components in the volatile acid, but mainly it's acetic acid vinegar. And I think it's called volatile because it's the one that you can uh, make the determinate after the distillation of the wine. So, oh, okay. Yeah. The, the tartaric acid is acidità fissa in Italia. Yeah. Fix acidity. No, it doesn't change, obviously. It doesn't change after. I mean, it remains. See, fixed acidity. You can distill. Fine. Volatile acidity, you distill it. Okay. So you find in the. In the distillate. Yeah. So after you distill the wine, you'll still find the volatile acidity. Exactly. Ah, so it'll evaporate. Yeah. This is ah. the way you evaporate. Exactly. Yeah. This is the way we make the analysis to find. I mean, but now I it's think, more. Yeah. The takeaway, now it's more automatic. <laughs> the takeaway should be, and Nat, I'll have you, I'll, I'll taste with you sometime a natural wine with that, that I think has the, the volatile acidity. I've got it. I've got it. Over I've, the top. Go ahead. I've got. The, I have been in this country, I've been in this region for 18 years and I've spent the vast majority of my time in the countryside with contadini and they will make their own wine and Nono makes his wine and Nono won't spend a penny on anything because it's all chemicals and his wine makes you go <laughs> and you've got blue lips afterwards yes. because it's a bit, bit sometimes a it's bit great vinegary, but it yeah. can be quite tart and yeah. vinegary. My, my mother-in-law's wine can Well, do also that my so father-in-law's wine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's good, but it's got, I guess... A little bit of that, that tang. Which a so-called professional wine... Tends not to For one, no. exactly. So, but complimenti, Dimitri, for, for this wine that really has domato, really has tamed that, <laughs> that, that VA kind of edge that a lot, of, a lot of natural wines totally turn me off. Mm-hmm. That it's just like, it's like going into a vinegar factory. So, but yeah, good job on, on that. And we'll, we'll open the, the, 
the Rebola Jala when we go off the air. So yeah. we can try that with Nat. Yeah. So I have some people here in the in the audience. I've invited everyone up to speak, but if you're if you have a question for Dimitri or Diletta, Luciana and Heather and Vanessa, um, now is the time to come up on stage. I'm giving you your time to shine. So come on up if you want to ask um, these guys from Villa Rubini a question. Otherwise, forever hold your peace. So yeah, it looks like, it looks like everybody is just listening today. So anyway, I know, I think Vanessa raised her hand, but she didn't come up on stage, I think, because I was telling the story about the Krampus. So anyway, and, and our friend Stacy. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. You've been absolutely delightful. Thank you for sharing more thank about, you for about the wine. I, I want to know more. I'm definitely going to open that Rebola Jala after we go off the air so we can try that together. Yeah. And I look forward to coming up and visiting you. Yeah. At Villa Rubini because it's only been 15 years. So, so I think I'm due to come up and say hi to you again. Oh, but, yeah. um, but you once guys- Once every 50, 15 once years, every, yeah, it's reasonable. I, I think we can make it a little bit more often than 15 you, years. You mean? Be, yeah. <laughs> so, but, we'll, uh, but we see each other around from time to time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I haven't been up there You're recently. You're always so. welcome. Yeah. But all the best guys, further success with the, I'm trying to sort of fill in time until Nat comes back. So, so all the best to you guys. Thank you for, for coming all the way out here to, to the studio Taverna in Rizzi and, uh, and sharing your time with us. We've been going for about an hour, so I don't want to keep you too long, but, uh, yeah, congratulations on all of the wonderful things you're doing, Diletta. Oh, thank and you. And all the fantastic wines really? that you're doing, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank so, you. yeah, very, very, very impressed. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have rediscovered your wines. And, uh, and your, your winery, because, and all of the stuff on your end, you let that, I, I didn't know about mm -hmm. until I just started, you know, sort of researching for the podcast. Already, we, we hope that you come, yeah, to visit us in Spesta, so just maybe to visit the villa and the, the, the inside of the villa and the, the park, and you know, I, th I think it could be, could be nice for yeah, you just I, to visit this small part of history that, that we have. Absolutely. It's, it's small part, but it's something that... But it's, really, it's, it's, it's rich. It's rich. It's yeah. rich in atmosphere and in rich of uh, love. I think uh, it's rich in, rich in love. Oh, <laughs> you two are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Nat, did you have any questions to close out the... Um, no, the I'm, I'm, um, I think I, I got all my questions in this time, didn't I? Quite. I asked as I went along. I don't Fantastic. have anything. The one thing I would say is that my interest as it were apart from my love and my passion here with wayne and wine and that rhymes wayne's wine wayne's wine wine's wayne yeah. um <laughs> is that i work in wine tourism do you belong to the movimento turismo del vino friulimetia julia oh wait but at the moment no no at the moment no, no. strada del vino Okay. I work partly with them, but independently from them. Okay. And so a lot of the work I do is I try, unfortunately, we have COVID, which has been a devastating. I can't wow. even, it, it makes me, to the core, it makes me cry. It really has, I mean, my voice is going, it really has upset a project <clears throat> however that wasn't tears that was just a cough what obviously what you do is you've got a whole package for people yes so it's not it's not only about the wine no it's about the whole experience it's, it's an about... experience that's true it's an experience it's a there is the wine the wine is super wine dimitri is a, it's, it's super with with what he's doing with uh, with the you know with the organic wines you've got but then it, the it's it's nice to and this this part of history that we have, it's really nice to condividere in Italiano, share, to share. share. That's the, the right word, to share with the people, because it's something really important for our land. Uh, and uh, it's a really small part, but uh, you can understand many things from this small part. Uh, and also the wine, because it starts from the culture, no? The culture from this place, and wine is also part of the culture of of, no, our land. Absolutely. So it's uh, stay together, no? Stay together, the villa, stay together, the garden, stay together, the wine, uh, the tourism, uh, the, the, the parts that we do with, uh, with, the, with the children, and the people, learning farm. It's all together to make something 
to promote something, but... A complete experience. People yeah. come for a complete experience. Yeah. People come for two days or a week or three days, depending on the time of year, romantically with family or a school trip. Yeah. And they want to go somebody, somewhere like they've been doing in France and Italy and Portugal and these other really important wine destinations. They want to go somewhere beautiful. They want to learn something. They want to experience good food, good wine with the people that make it, which is very yeah. good advertising. It's it's, quite yeah. good advertising. And I, I, this, this is happening more and more because we were talking before. We, we talked to Michele Pace and we visited Villa Pace, which was, was crazy. And they also sort of have that kind of 360 degree view towards you know, wine and tourism and hospitality and that and yes. that. And you guys have this sort of extra dimension of the, the teaching farm, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, so bringing kids closer to agriculture and understanding where our food comes from, you know. And that, what you said before, the experience, you're yeah, right. And I think it's the right time now to, to share the experience, not only to speak about this or to not to tell about that, but to do something and to, to be part of something. Like, the thing, this is the, the thing. My objective on a very personal level is to try and push people, as it were, toward people who love Italy because Italy's, you know, people adore Italy. Lots of people love wine. And to encourage them to come here, which is one of the regions that people say, well, where is it? Hmm, what is it? And any of the top tour operators that talk about Friuli Venezia Giulia talk about it in a very specialist way because Middle Europa, you know, Middle Europe, and they talk about its history and everything else. And if we can bring together the wine, the history, the, history. the swimming pool, really important for people in the summertime, yeah. all me. of these things, it's true. Why would we're, we're onto something? Yeah. So. And it's Go gonna, away, it's, COVID. It's gonna. It's Go just gonna get COVID. better and better. It's gonna get better and better. I have one last question for both Diletta and for Dimitri. So, and this is something that I learned from our friend Paolo Rodaro. He says you always have to ask, "What is your sogno nel cassetto? What is your sort of secret little project, your little dream for the future?" Would you like that I answer first, or Dimitri? Oh, would you like to do? Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Mio nel cassetto, my dream. Uh, my dream is um, to have the possibility to do something more for the villa and for the for the park uh, and uh, to promote uh, the place so can uh, can have more more people that visit the place and maybe do something more to maintain the villa and to take care of that place because it needs uh, it needs a lot of energy and and so you know uh, my dream is to do something better for the place uh, that uh, we are living now that we are staying in to preserve that also for the future no to take care now of the place and maybe in the future the other generation in 100 years 200 years maybe have that place to stay to visit and with uh, this very big history no that is it's very important no the history it's, everything starts from the history so absolutely this is our, this is my dream to, to try to take care of that place in, in the future with uh, my family and, uh, and all the people that like to join us. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Dimitri, what about oh. yours? Since the natural Pinot Noir came through, it's a sailing boat. Okay. <laughs> you want to sail though? <laughs> yeah. And, I can see it well, now. You know, I mean, you know, I can see uh, after, it. You know what they say about boats, right? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. The two happiest days in a man's <laughs> life is when he buys his first boat and sells his first boat. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Who says oh, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Everybody who's ever had a boat. Oh. <laughs> so, but me, in the meantime, you can drink Pinot Noir on the boat. Exactly. Uh, yeah. No. So, so you make the Pinot Noir just to drink it on the boat. Exactly. Oh, and no. so maybe I will be by myself in space. Yeah. <laughs> in the future. Now I'm torn. I don't know if I want to go to the pool or I want to go out on the boat. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank, Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, Diletta. Oh, you guys have Mila. been Thank delightful. You, really. And I mean that in the very, the truest sense of the word. Nat, thank you for joining that's us. A, that's a third Welcome D. back, darling. I love having you here. I love being here. Uh, Diletta, Dimitri, delightful. I love it. So Dimitri, do I. Dileta, Dileta. Delightful. Then we use it on the website. I think you should, <laughs> actually. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's all yours. Really, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Anyway, yes. Robbie, thank Grazie. you for being here as always. Thank you, everybody, Luciana and and um, and Vanessa and uh, Heather, who was here. A couple of other people were in the room as well, but they've left. But um, yeah, it's been a really great session. So thanks, guys. No, grazie mille. Really, thank you. Okay. R- really, we'll really, thank you. Grazie. Grazie.